is a 1952 Bentley R-Type, Radford Countryman. This car is owned by the Rolls-Royce Foundation and is presently under restoration. As part of that project, we're going to do the brakes. And the first step is to show you the tools we'll need. To undertake this job, you're going to need a set of sockets. Probably one would be enough, but we've got two. We've got deep and shallow to get us through every situation. We've got a ratchet, an extension, a baby ratchet, and a regular ratchet. This gives you the option of any tight bolts or anything in a tight spot you can, you can deal with. I've got a magnet. The magnet's to pull the bolt from the rear adjuster out from the backing plate. I've got an 11.32 wrench. That's the wrench of choice for me for the uh, 2BA bolt. I've got a nice six-sided one. Any tight bolts, it'll get out. Then I've got a set of double open-ended wrenches. The reason for this is generally you're dealing with bolts on these early cars and you'll have a nut at the other end, so that gives you the option to hold the square head. And then I've got a combination set of wrenches. This gives me a box end if I've got any tight nuts. And I'm, what I'm using is two 15 16 wrenches for the servo, for the locking nuts on the servo. And I've got a short one there for my preference. And what I've got here is an American brake tool. This tool is available from Snap-on, but it works very well for removing the springs on the front shoes or the front master cylinder that holds the shoes in and the rear. So that's a must. You need one of those. I have a brass or a soft hammer there, and I have a regular hammer. I've got a, a number of punches, all different sizes, for knocking clevis pins out and also for supporting the rivets when we rivet the shoes and the servo liner on. I've got a soft brass drift for beating on things that I don't want to damage. I've got a pair of pliers, side cutters, and some unmarking vice grips. I've got a big set of pliers for pushing the cylinders back or for whatever. And I've got a split pin remover. On the servo, there's two very difficult split pins to remove, and uh, this is the tool that I like. I've got some very long handled pliers, and there's a number of cotter pins or split pins that are very difficult to remove. And I've got a regular pair of side cutters just to cut the head off split pins that I want to remove. I have a screwdriver, probably more a lever than a screwdriver, but I'll need it as a screwdriver on the server. And I have a C-ring. On the early cars, very early cars, it has a single piston wheel cylinder, but we'll discuss more about that later. And a long pair of needle nose pliers. And a 13-16 socket and an impact gun to remove the wheel lug. And of course, we've got some never seize to put on the pins and the linkage so that we don't run into seizure that we'll probably see as we go along. And that's it for the tools. Now we'll get on with the job. When you remove the wheels, the next step is to remove the drum. After you remove the screws, you're going to have to remove the drum. And to uh, free up the drum, it's kind of grown to the hub. We're going to strike the end of the uh, stud. <coughs> The reason we didn't bang the edge of the drum is you can see the fins on there are very thin and we would have broken those off. So that's the reason we struck the end of the stud, which jarred it enough to free up the drum from the hub. The next step is to remove the springs and to remove the shoe. So we're going to remove the spring, like so. Next thing is we're going to remove this 2BA bolt. This is going to free off the horseshoe clip. Yeah. We're going to remove the clevis pin. It's been in here a little while, so it frees up, like so. 
can see the arm drop down. That allows us to pull the shoe away. To unclip the uh, spring retainer, like so. And we're going to allow the shoe to come in close to us, the spring is pulling. We're going to try and get this piece of linkage out of the way, like so. And then we're going to lift the pull against the spring and bring the shoes off like so. That removes the shoe. We're left with the cylinder, the wheel cylinder. We're left with an extremely old hose. We can see the herringbone pattern and we know that they haven't used that for a good number of years, so we'll need to change that. Now we're going to inspect the wheel cylinder to see what's going on there. I'm going to lift out the rubber dust cover, like so. You can see a good deal of rust and stuff in there, so the expectation will be for the cylinder to be seen. So what I'm going to do now to make life easy for myself is I'm going to use a brass lift and I'm going to push the two pistons out. You can see from this that the wheel cylinder is well and truly seized and we're going to have to take some extraordinary action to free up those pistons. So what we'll do is we'll take the cylinder off complete with the pistons, so the next thing to do is to remove the hose. We're removing the fitting, and because the engine's out, we're able to get a good view of the uh, fitting coming out of the, the end of the hose. Uh, once we've removed the fitting, we're going to take the lock nut that holds the hose to the bracket. You may encounter a fitting that is seized to the pipe, and what you would need to do is to be very careful when you undo this fitting and notice whether or not the pipe turns with the fitting. If it does, you need to take the appropriate action to uh, free it up, tighten it up a little bit, spray it with some penetrating oil, and in a really serious situation, you would need to heat up the fitting but you really don't want the pipe to turn or it's going to break off and you're going to be faced with making a new pipe. So we undo the lock, we undo the lock nut. Although the car is somewhat deteriorated, there's plenty of grease everywhere to keep this stuff free, which is a good thing. We need to take the lock nut off the hose first because the fitting that is in the back of the wheel cylinder has no means of turning. We take the nut off and there's a tape proof type washer on there, a tooth, an external tooth washer. We're going to leave those there for now because the pipe, the brake pipe goes right through the bracket. We're now ready to remove the pipe from the back of the cylinder. So we'll remove the hose from the uh, back of the wheel cylinder see there. And on that hose there's a little copper washer which you'll either replace or save. You can see that there. And we don't want to lose that. We're now going to remove the three nuts that hold the wheel cylinder to the backing plate. Let's get this last stud out because it's coming with the nut. There, the, the stud and the plate will come out. And we're going to pull the wheel cylinder off. It's kind of attached with this mucky rubber there. And you can see that the other plate there, which normally would be supported by the stud, comes off with it. So that's the wheel cylinder off. We need to uh, address the adjuster at the bottom here. This adjuster's seized up. So we're going to remove these two bolts and remove the adjuster so that we can free that up. So we take the two bolts out and the adjuster should come off. You'll notice 
in here there's a couple of spaces that will need to stay in or take out. That completes this wheel. Now we'll go over and do the same thing on the other wheel. We've removed the wheel and the drum the same way we did the front, and now we're going to remove the brake shoe. First thing we're going to do is remove this spring, and then we're going to remove this bolt and a clever spin, this bolt and that clever spin. So we're using the uh, same tool we used on the front, and we're going to pull against the spring and take it off the pin. It's a bit of a fiddle, but you might take a couple of good tries. A bit of a tough one there, so we pulled that off. Don't need to worry too much about the spring. Move this bolt. We're going to take the clip off. If we can. Everything's a little tight on this car, as I said before. Uh, pull that. Pin out. We're going to repeat the process down here. Take that pin out. Taking the linkage off the uh, brake shoe. Now we're going to pull down, pull up. Then we get to pull the shoe off the back, off there, we'll work it around, and that removes the shoe. So we're going to pull this piece of linkage off, just to get it out of the way, now we take the axle shaft. Now we're going to have to take the expander out. There are no, there's no hydraulics in the rear of these cars, just uh, mechanical brakes. And this expander is seized up, so we're going to take it off the backing plate, take it to the bench, and I'll show you how to free that up. We've got a couple of uh, split pins in there and a couple of castellated nuts. So now we need to take the split pins out. Because of the tight location of the split pins, the only hope we've got is to put these pliers, these long arm pliers, on the head of the split pin and pull. So that's what we're going to do. You can see that we managed to get that one out, or half of it. And there we managed the other half. And what we'll do, we'll undo the nut now. You can see again, too tight for a ring wrench. So what we'll have to do is use our open-ended Then we can uh, go on to the top one and put the pliers and see how well we can do with that. We did very well with that. We managed to get that out in one go. And then we'll remove that nut. We really need to get those slip pins, potter pins out of there. If you can't, if you really can't, and you turn the nut, Stand a chance of either pulling the stud out of the uh, aluminum, which will cause you a good deal of grief because of the tight location and the fact that the rod runs right through. It will, it won't release it. So it's very, very important. And those long handled pliers seem to be the uh, ticket for uh, being able to get the uh, tightest of. Uh, so we've re now removed the nut more or less from the uh, stud and we'll, we'll leave those there. We're going to have to let go of the rod on the inside of the compensator on the rear axle and we'll do that in a few moments. What we're going to do now is we're going to remove the bolt from the adjuster at the back of the, or the front of the uh, back. So we've got our pliers on the pin. We'll pull that 
pull just pull that out of there. And I'm going to push up on the clever pin, hopefully. So we've got the pliers on the top of the pin, and now we're going to try and pull it out. We're using the leverage wherever we can get it. So we managed to remove the pin. That freed up the rod, and that will allow us to take the expander off the back of off the backing plate. We're going to remove the adjuster now. It's a, another tight location, and what we're going to do is use a thin wrench and work both of the bolts. This allows the uh, adjuster to come towards you and allows you to keep using the box end wrench on the uh, bolt. Try and use the opening wrenches, they're too fat, and they don't allow you to do this. On the back side of these, of course, there's the adjusting handle, which will have to undo the lock nut and then unscrew the handle off the shaft. And before we get too far, we'll undo the lock nut. And then we'll undo the handle. There's the lock nut and the handle. So we'll go back to our bolts again. And so keep the thing coming towards you. We we'll pull that out. And that's the uh, backing plate. Now we're going to pull the expander out. A couple of factory washers on the back. Mm -hmm. Also, we've got a rubber O ring stopping our uh, stopping us pulling the expander right out. And there's the dust cover. I'm going to work the dust cover through. And you can see we've got the expander out. That completes this wheel. Now we'll go over and do the same thing on the other wheel. As I demonstrated on the car, the wheel cylinder was very badly seized up. Like the master cylinder, we're going to need to move the piston inside there. So what I'm going to do is something that you can do at home is I'm going to put it in the vise like so and I'm going to put pressure on there to make it move. You saw that when I was on the car and I hammered it, it wouldn't move. But with this, this kind of pressure, once you get the piston to move, I'm sure we can uh, again phase the cylinder. So what we'll do is we'll squeeze the vise, you can see that moved in now. And then we'll turn it around, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Make sure it's nice and square, you don't want to put pressure on the wrong spot. You can see that also started to move. You can see that that's pushing the fluid out, so we know we've got good movement there. I'm going to continue to push on that, hoping that the whole thing will pack up and start to push everything this way. If you've got a press or something, you could do a press, but this is to uh, give you an opportunity to do this at home. Now you can see there that the piston has moved and moved quite well out. So we're, we're in pretty good shape there. We'll see if it'll now move that way. tell by the sound that we're getting movement. You can see it's almost out and I can actually pull it right out now. So we'll put it back in the vise and we'll continue to knock the piston which will push the expanders and the 
spring out. There's the uh, other piston and the other cup seal. So we've uh, basically saved that piston. We've done it no harm, no damage. Again, it will be glass beaded, sent for cash lading, and then in turn sleeved and brought back into use. Okay, we're now going to rebuild the wheel cylinder. We're going to uh, put the cup expander in first. Lubricate the cup. It really doesn't matter which end we put it in first. Make it straight. So, we can put a piston in. At this point, we'll put the dust cover in. The reason for that is because the dust cover will keep the, the piston somewhat together, or the piston in, as long as we don't push too hard. We'll put that in the groove, and we'll turn it over. You can get the expander. cover in. So. Then we're going to put the seal on the back side. This seals the backing plate. And put the uh, nipple in. Let's nip that up a little bit. We may as well put the hose in at this point. See, we've got the copper washer on the hose. And that's the wheel cylinder rebuilt and ready to go on the car. And of course, we'd repeat the process for the other side. You may very well find, if you have an early car, that you will be dealing with a different type of wheel cylinder. This wheel cylinder here was used in the very first cars of the production series and uh, is a single piston arrangement with an expander built in. Um, this, this cylinder has an inherent problem, and that is that the uh, studs will break off quite easily, so you have to be very, very careful with these that you don't uh, end up with this problem. They're quite rare and difficult to get, so you, you need to be particularly careful with these. Um, if you're dealing, you'll know when you're dealing with this, uh, this wheel cylinder because it sticks out from the backing plate a good inch and a half whereas the one that we're doing with the uh, 52 car doesn't stick out very much at all. So what I'm going to do, just for the benefit of those people that end up with this wheel cylinder, is I'm going to take it apart and show and explain the uh, setup for putting it back together. There's a small Allen screw that locks the, the closing cap there. Just loosen that off. Then we're going to put it in the vise to hold it. And take our sea spanner and undo it. If, if it's very, very tight, which it could well be, the best thing to shock it to loosen it up, I found, is to uh, put it on the edge of the vise and strike it there with a uh, soft hammer. And do that several times all the way round and you'll find that that'll free that up easily. Inside here is a spring so you need to hang on to it if you undo it. 
As you can see, the, everything's rusty and seized up that we've dealt with today. Um, also, as in the rear ex expanders, you can see that there's two rivets to hold the expanders from coming out in this unit also. So I'm going to have to lay it back in the vise and tap these two rivets out to allow the expanders to come out. take the expanded out, you can see the cut out that the rivet goes through. And in there. I'm going to now push, hopefully, the piston out from the back side. You can see the ramp that pushes the expander with the roller there, which causes that to do it. So you've got hydraulic pressure on a cup seal, which pushes the piston, which sends the expanders out. So we'll look into that now. You've got a real mess inside there, as you can see. So you're going to have to dig at that rubber to make it come out. By digging all around the rubber, I've managed to loosen it up enough, so I'm pushing out, as you can see. So we, we have a single cup in there, and inside we have an expander and a spring. And you can see we got, we got very lucky with that, because we didn't uh, do too much damage. There's a hole all the way through, which allowed us to push on the rubber and onto the bottom of the piston. Had this stud not been broken off, this cylinder would be quite saveable. If you're equipped with that, you can see that all you'll need for the car is two rubber cups, not uh, four as you would if you had the later one. We're now ready to take the expander apart. The expander was seized up as we demonstrated on the car. And what we need to do first is remove these bifurcated rivets. These rivets hold the piston in from coming out. What we want to do is to try and squeeze them and then push them through. And we'd like to use them again, really. So we're going to squeeze the rivets together, like so. Then we're going to take it to the vise and we're going to tap on the rivet and see if we can get it out of there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pull these pistons out. I pulled on the rod which pushed them out somewhat. You can see that the piston has a roller, and this is tapered, which pushes them out. And this, of course, is joined to the foot pedal and to the uh, servo mechanism. So that the initial press of the pedal pulls these out, gives you a feel to the drum, and then the servo through the compensator pulls on them on a hard braking application. So we'll pull that one out as well. It's a little bit old and tired to breathe, a little sticky. And what we're going to do is we, we've got good action there, it's pretty good action. So we'll wash this out thoroughly and clean it. If, however, this had been seized up, we would have needed to take this ring off that would allow our piston to come, come through. This is the spring holder, and then that would come through. So what I'll do for the purpose of demonstration is I'll put this in here, and we'll see if we can get this to move. I'm using a pair of vice grips that aren't going to mark up the uh, teeth. There's no, no real teeth. You can see what I'm doing that there. As you 
there's lots of uh, dried up grease inside there and we'll we'll take that apart and clean that up you can see on this expander rod that the rubber has uh, suffered over the years it's uh, somewhat uh, deteriorated to say the least and we're going to need to change this well with the new rubber to try and put it over this end of course would be an impossibility so we'll need to strip out this end the uh, cover on the end is rolled over on the edge we need to come up with a way to allow us to take the cover off and put it back on. It was never designed with that in mind. It's not really a serviceable item. So we're going to have to be somewhat clever about what we do so that we can save it. So I'm going to put it up against the vise. I'm going to take a soft hammer. Support it in one hand. Uh, half off the end. You can see that the expander now has popped out. So we push that out all the way. If I rotate that a bit, you can see there's a pin that's just pushed in there that will allow us to take that rod out. Keep the vise open somewhat, kind of support this under my arm. Tap that down. That allows us to pull the expander off and the spring and the old nut. We'll have no difficulty getting the old rubber off. You can see there. And that's what we do for the expander. Now we'll go on to the adjuster. This is also in the rear drum. And this is a very similar item. It's an expander. The uh, handle, when you turn it, winds this in, which pushes these out. That, in turn, pushes the uh, shoes against the drum. You can see that the grease has dried up and got sticky in there, and that's why we took it off. So that will go into the solution also and clean that up. We'll need to wind this all the way out. So we'll put the handle onto the expander <coughs> and we'll use that to, to make this thing come apart. So we'll hold it in the vise like so and I'll take these uh, pliers and I, I hope that it'll move. It's just a little tight, a little stiff. What we're going to do is we're going to wind that all the way out and that'll give us the opportunity to clean the thread and then to uh, put some anti seize or never seize on there. I need to take a, a minute now to hold the shaft because I have to get the handle off again. You see it tightened right up with the moving that. Get that to clean up. So we've been able now to wind that right the way through, take that apart and that's ready for cleaning and when it's all washed we'll lubricate it up and put it back together. We'll put a bit of Vaseline inside the rubber. You might want to uh, get some kind of an external expanding plier to uh, Spread open the, the end. It's still somewhat of a trick shot because even though you put it over, you're still faced with getting the pliers out, so it isn't altogether that easy. drag that off there. So we're going to put the uh, cover and the spring on the rod. We'll pass that through the expander body. And 
you put the expander on the rod. You're going to have to go to the vise. We've gone in a bit. I'm going to rotate it and I'll look to see how central our rod is. Try and get that over the hole. So I look down there. that very flush, you can see that. Now I've split the difference. There's two slots there, and we'll slide the expander in there. So we've got the rivets on the same side as the cutouts. Cutout rivet, and our two rollers. And we're going to put some grease in there, some anti seize type stuff. Take that up. Put in there. Give it a good coat in there. And that allows us to put the roller in there. Hopefully we'll get some support. In like so. And bring that up just a little bit. Let's put our rivets back in. Tap it through. Now we're just going to bend these over a little bit. To uh, just to stop them coming out. And that's good enough just to stop them coming out. That keeps the expander together. Now, when we pull that out, you can see those come out. When we push it in, they go back in. We need to now put the cover back on. Um, this isn't a serviceable item, as I said, so we're going to have to push it back on. We've kept it as tight as we can. And bring back some shape to it. What we're going to have to do is to try and do what they, they did originally, which is machine roll it. What we have to do is uh, push the edge in. We don't have the luxury of a machine which they had originally. So I'm going to take a small chisel and I'm going to just go around it probably in about four or five places. even able to spin it. So I've moved it around a bit. Very tricky. And then to the other side now. I think it's staying a bit, so we pushed you can see where I managed to get that to actually roll down quite nicely. Still rotate and take advantage of that. Bring that around. See that's gone in. So we're I would say we're we're achieving our goal. And as long as the cut doesn't come out. We're, we're fine. So we'll, we've gone around there two or three or four places and that's uh, holding the whole thing together. And we'll leave it at that. We'll push. Wind the knurled nut that holds the spring in. I can demonstrate that. That's the way it should work. So that's ready to go back on the car.
I strongly recommend that you replace the linings with riveted linings that you buy from the dealer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to take the linings off and how to put linings on. It's a very easy operation and you can do it on in the vise in the garage. So we'll, we'll go through that now. So we'll hold it in the vise like so. And we'll just drill off the heads of the rivet. We're not going to go through the steel. Make ourselves comfortable, we'll turn it around. Do the last four. And then what I'm going to do, take the shoe out, I'm going to close the vice up and use that as support. Lay it down like so. all the rivets out. And you've got all of the rivets banged out. The lining comes off very easily. Now we're ready to, to clean the grease off this, glass feed it, and send it out for CAD plating. And when it comes back, we'll be ready to put a lining on it. two types of shoes used on this car. The front, which is a, a thinner um, support, and the rear, which is a bigger support. On earlier cars, they used all of this type of shoe, and they didn't use any of that. So you need to take note of that when you're uh, doing your brake job. So this is the front, and that's the rear. We're now going to attach the brake lining to the brake shoe. To do this, we're going to use rivets. This is how it was done originally, and I strongly recommend that we, we do this. Um, I'm not keen on bonded linings at all. They tend to overheat the drum, and uh, the rivets is, is the way they were originally and the way they come through life, and I, I recommend that you continue on with that. And to do this, what you need to do is to align the holes, and we use the rivets to do this. You need to put every single rivet in before you start anything to be sure that they're going to line up. If you don't do that, you'll, you'll find yourself unable to put the rivets in the end. The shoe and the lining may not have exactly the same arc, so you need to uh, it around sufficiently I've got all those rivets in. You can see that the arc of the, sh the lining isn't quite the same as the shoe. And to overcome that, we're going to just take a set of vice grips and we're going to pull that down. You can see that squash that down there. And then I'm going to turn it over. Make that fairly tight. And that's pulled that down. And as we go along, we'll start in the centre, pull it, and we'll move our grips as we go, so that we keep pulling the lining down to the shoe. We'll put a punch in the vice. Because we've got to turn the shoe over, a little trick that uh, I learnt probably from necessity, I'll put a bit of tape over each hole face crawling around on the floor looking for rivets. We position that like so. 
We're using a rivet punch or a rivet set. You can see the shape in the end of the punch, which will turn our rivets over nicely. You can hear the note change, which means that you're nice and tight and nice and firm. You can see the shape we have on the rivet. And we repeat that process all the way down the shoe, working from the centre. You must remember to move your vice grips as you go. Now the vice grips are here, so we'll do this line with no problem. Better hang on to one of them. down to our last rivet now. So that's the last rivet. We can take our grips off. And you can see that that, sh that lining is uh, right onto that shoe all the way around. Can't have any gap or anything like that because the heat transfers through the shoe and down through the axle and away. You need to be sure that that's good and tight or you're going to have an overheating problem. Just flip it over. See that side's okay. We repeat that process for all four wheels. First thing we're doing, going to do is change the linkage in the springs over to the new shoe. Here's the split pin. <coughs> Clevis pin. So the shoes are now ready to go on the backing plate and we'll fix the wheel cylinder to the backing plate. Before you put the wheel cylinder on, make, make sure your rubber seal's in place and the metal plate is on with the hole towards the rear of the car. Like twist the hose through the hole and pick up the three studs in the holes. Place the plate on the back side of the backing plate. Spring washers and nuts, hold it on. What we'll do is we'll just nip that up a little bit so that the wheel cylinder can centralise as we adjust the shoes. <coughs> and after the adjustment is complete, we'll tighten the nuts up. We we'll take the opportunity now to put the hose onto the brake line and we'll put on like so. And what we'll start the fitting before we put the lock nut on gives us the opportunity to give it plenty of movement with the hose and make sure that we get the fitting in without cross-threading it. 
once we wound the fitting more or less home. We'll bring the lock nut up to the hose. So we're now going to lubricate the adjuster and fit it to the backing plate. Lubricate the thread. Take it through the big hole on the adjuster. Wind it all the way in. A bit of copper, on, copper grease on the milk. And then you can see the slot there lines up with the hole. Then we just slip it into the back and close. Then we take our special bolts, bolts with a Sitting on the end, and they hold the, uh, the adjusting legs into the adjuster. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave everything just mixed up till we get the shoes on, so that everything can centralise. And once the Shoes are nice and tight against the drum, we'll tighten everything up. So we'll put the uh, fork in the uh, dust covers. Then we'll pick up the brake shoes. We're going to put them into the adjuster. So, you're going to have to hold on to everything and try and make all of it aligned. So, a bit fiddly, but once you get everything in place, it'll stay there. So now we'll put the uh, clevis pin in the front shoe. Make sure everything is in place. And We'll see them just together a bit. There we go. Align the pin so that the clip fits in, the bolt in. Just tighten that up. We're going to take our hook, put it through that hole. We have to get it through the hole in the plate behind, which I've done. We're going to put our spring into the hole on the wheel cylinder. Take our tool. We've got to bring the two together. A bit of a tricky number. And we're going to ease bring on to there. That's why this tool is so important. So now we've got the shoes on, we're in the adjuster. So now we're going to put the drum on and then we're going to adjust up the shoes which will push them against the drum, centralise all this and then we'll tighten our bolt. So now we're ready to fit the drum. Put the three screws in. Now we're nice and free, so we're going to tighten up the adjuster at the bottom. We wind this all the way in. Until we really can't move it anymore. Really tight in. 
and what that's done is pushed out the shoes on the bus and centralised that wheel cylinder. So we're going to tighten them up on the rear cylinder. We're going to tighten the anchor bolt for the adjuster. release it until the, the drum spins freely and that's the adjustment set up for the front wheels. 